which is yours will come to you. If you bring forms of God. But the psalmist says, He is my refuge. He is my strong tower, my fortress. It doesn't matter what is happening around me. I can stand and say, God is with me in this moment. Thank you. We were to share our time half and half. Now that you have left your own time, I wonder what you will do with it. All right, let's continue from there. Where is your Bible now? Where did you open to? Are you still at Acts 20? You didn't move to. Okay. What does it say? The word of grace. Thank God for the ICT people. Some people are no more opening because Acts might be difficult to find. Now, my interest in that, he says, is able to build you up. Now, it's, maybe you are not yet convinced that you are a joint heir with Christ. Are you following me? Now, what that means to me is that I have access to what Jesus had access to. Do you understand? His father cared for him, so my father cares for me. We have access to the same source of power. Now, but how come I'm not able to manifest the power as he did? I probably have not allowed that word of grace to build me up enough. Can you put back verse 20, chapter, verse 32 of Acts 20? And to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? Build you up. Now, when you look at verse 1 of chapter 4, Galatians, it tells you that the heir, for as long as he is a child, now he has no access to the inheritance. So you can be a believer for 20 years, and you are not growing, and you are not maturing, then God cannot entrust you with those things. So the word of his grace is what's going to build us up. And we can't read this from the pages of newspaper. Like I said in the first service, you know, for some of us, we've even outgrown the Wednesday meetings, not to talk of the house fellowships. You've gotten so busy. I was teasing my brother, who I hadn't seen for a long while. And I said, ah, you got back to church. You're not only back to church, he's working so hard. So I said to him, did you lose that your job? And he said, yes. I said, it's obvious. Because this is the same cycle that we go through. For some people, it's when you are trying to pursue that job, you are very righteous and religious. But once you get it, Sunday morning you are the one fixing business meetings. Say so this job, my God, the Lord really blessed us. Last Sunday we were in Japan. This coming Sunday we'll be in Tokyo. And you are not going to church there. Allow the word to build you up. Are you with me? That becomes easy. If you go to Psalm 37 verse 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein for how many months? Did he say the righteous shall buy the land? He shall what? For how long? Did he say the man who goes to church shall inherit the land? No, the righteous. The righteous. So when you begin to live the God kind of life, it's easy for the other things to follow. Now, out of Christ, you are in darkness. 
There are levels, there are kinds of results you can receive here. But when you now come into Christ, you become a partaker of the divine nature. Has God failed before? So you too will not fail. Now, because you are here now, you begin to have the results. It's like um, Pastor Paul Adeforasin gave an illustration during the PFN National Convention. He was flying in a jet, and then he wanted to go to the back of the aircraft. So he walked slowly towards the back. But this aircraft is traveling at 800 plus kilometers per hour. And he is walking very slowly. Is he still traveling at the speed of that jet? There is a manner of life that belongs to the kingdom. Are you with me? That once you are in that kingdom, this is how things happen. Psalm 1 verse 3 says, whatever he doeth shall what? So you live where people struggle to wear whatever prospers. Now, it's, it's, it, it, it has nothing to do with what you do. It's whatever. Whatever. Because you are now a committed part of the kingdom. In other words, God's rule and blessing are upon your life. You are not just one of those seeking only the blessing. Like you know, we have in Matthew chapter 6, if you go to verse 33, write down. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what? And what will happen? And then you will have to fast to get married. To get a job. You will have to really pray to become prosperous. What will happen if you seek God's kingdom and his righteousness? Now all, what, like what? Like all. Like all. Now but do we really believe that? Now we now in the church, what's happening now is that we seek more of those things. So you say, now we want a job, Father. We pray for job. It's good. We want children. We want husband. We want wife. We want to build a house. This year, part of my goal, I will no longer be a tenant. So, Father, I want to build a house so that these people will know too that I'm a child of God. God is not interested in proving anything. God is not under pressure. He's not trying to show to the devil that he has defeated him. Because the devil already knows. So you seek the kingdom. You wake up today, Lord, what are you doing? You have been built up to be part of that inheritance. And you can inherit the land. So you'll be thinking, how will I ever get money to buy land? Of course, land is getting very expensive in some areas. Even rent in Abuja can buy you land and build house here. And what surprises me is that even civil servants in Abuja live in those places. And I ask them, I say, how do you people get money to pay? How? And it's me that EFCC now wants to arrest if they don't arrest you people in Abuja, you leave it, rent one year, three million. How much is your own salary? Ephesians chapter 1. Don't ask me. It was extra. You know, yesterday, I was watching this TV program and there was a, a comedian that was brought up and I was really amused. And he said, I'm sure some of you watched it on AKBC. He said that outside this country there are emergency numbers. 
you call in case of fire accident you call 199 they answer you in Nigeria that it's not only that network will not go if you succeed to get through when you call I say welcome thank you for calling the Nigerian police force the police is your friend for armed robbery dial one Then he gave option. He said, for Boko Haram attack, hang up. <laughs> then the clown said that since he was under attack, he now died one. He said, for robbery with machine gun. <laughs> for robbery. For robbery with matches, dial two. <laughs> For robbery with Beham, dial three. <laughs> oh God. So he dialed one. <laughs> and the voice disappeared. <laughs> he now said, mm. The voice just said, mm -hmm. He got another one. Mm. <laughs> then the next thing he heard that this boy that was speaking English changed to Pigeon. He said, Oh boy, now nah, you did there. I said, Yes. You get brought up for police. <laughs> he said, Fine, fine place, hide till morning. <laughs> Then the boys told him, he said, find place, hide till morning. In the morning, we will come and take your statement, okay? <laughs> now, there is the tendency to think that the way things happen in this country, that's how it happens in the kingdom. Are you following me? There's a tendency to think that our governments, the way things have happened, thank God for the government that's beginning to care. Government is saying, ah, zero pothole. So we're looking, we're, our cities are being clean now. Things are getting better. So we can think that God's kingdom also operates like that. Because it's easy to get used to what you, have, you are seeing. So when God is saying that, hey, I will give my angels charge over you, that as you walk, you won't even dash your leg against a stone. Say, dash your leg again. The first time I went to the, a hospital in America, I was visiting Stuart, who works in the equivalent of a rural health center. He was showing me around we on the fourth floor where the nurse called, and then we got back to the ground. Before we got down to the lift, I mean, down to the ground at the reception, the nurse had done this cardiac test ECG. And I, I just was, instantly I started having fever. Because I just knew I had not been in a hospital before. And I was thinking, why was I ever born in Africa? My friend in Port Harcourt, who is a professor of surgery, said, I was so angry with our leaders. And when I called him and we spoke, he said, are you, you are angry with us? That himself, he went to Germany for the first time for their conference of orthopedics, and he knew that we are like a hundred years behind. And he, he was so angry with God. He didn't blame any Nigerian at all. He just said that, listen, forget it. So the tendency is to think that that's how the kingdom, but you see, if you look at that scripture, the scripture in Ephesians verses 17, 18 said that you have a revelation. You can understand what God has in mind concerning you. And once you have that revelation, I can guarantee you, you will begin to reap the proceeds of the kingdom. The benefits of the kingdom will be manifested in your life. You will begin to live as Jesus lived. 
and he says it works. Let's go to let's go to Ephesians chapter one. Let me read verse In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now, it does not depend on our economy. Hello? He works it out after the counsel of what? His own will. And God doesn't change his mind like I do. If I promise that I was going to do this for you and then you offend me, I'm likely going to say, thank God I didn't do it yet. See? Even with my promise, you are doing this. I said, now you have shown me that you don't deserve it. But my Bible says that the gifts and calling of the Lord are without repentance. That so once he has given it, once he has pronounced it, he can't get it back. He works according to the counsel of his will. Now, it's not dependent on our economy. So, you are, your security is guaranteed. Did Jesus borrow money while he was here? You two have come to the end of borrowing. Because the kingdom of God must be manifested in your life came to the beach and there was no boat to take him and he walked on the water. Those are the kinds of things. He didn't walk on the, on the water so that they would take the photograph and film it and then he would come and be showing uh, in TV. This is Jesus the Christ walking on water. Show you that. If multiplied bread to feed people but do you know that he never multiplied bread to feed himself? What was wrong in turning stone into bread? Nothing. Nothing. But you see, he would have been obeying the devil. Don't forget that God's kingdom is God's people in God's place under God's rule and blessing. Whose instruction are you receiving? Would have been a great testimony. My God, kingdom bread. In today's church, some pastors would have sold one loaf for 10,000 naira. This bread, <laughs> my God, this bread, once you eat it, someone said, the holy Jerusalem anointed oil. I said it was made by Palestinians. So some of you went and brought stones. Thank God that they didn't let you bring 50, 50 gallons jerry can to bring holy water. Holy water from the dead sea. Even the name of the sea is dead. What will make the water holy? This, then you bring more. They, we have done all kinds of things. And these things sound very spiritual. And come and see us jumping. And, and it's... If I was not born again, they would have made me feel like I'm the one that doesn't know what I'm doing. No, I know. No, I do. The kingdom of God is true that the Bible says it suffers violence. And the violent do what? Those who are unconcerned may not reap these benefits. Luke 15, if you study that parable or the story of the man who had the two sons, he said one suddenly knew that his father didn't have to die before he be, becomes part of the inheritance. So he went to him and said that, can I have my own portion of goods? father said, yes, you can you don't have to wait till you get to heaven. So his father gave him. Now the Bible says, the Bible doesn't say his father gave him. He divided his, his living in two. Or he divided them. Which means half went to the younger son. And the other one should have gone to who? But you see the elder one lived in his own house as a tenant. But you don't live like that in this world. When he wants to do party, he will buy seven up. The one that they now reduce to 45, one naira 50 cup. Then you drink it. And the younger of them said to his father, Give, them, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. Who are the them? Yes, the, the young rascally one took his own. 
And the other one left his own for the community and was busy complaining. Since I became a Christian, nothing has changed. Did you really give your life to Christ or you fainted at Calvary? You revived and took your life back. When you woke up, you didn't die. You said, thank God, this is me. They took you to baptism as they have announced for this Saturday. They said they will put you under water. I said, no, me. I will go under water, but not my pocket. So you do like that man in that, you bring out your wallet. It's okay, keep this. You won't go. No, you, when you are in the kingdom, you bring everything under God. You think like those Hebrew boys, we serve a God that can deliver. But we know that this is our God sometimes. He does not answer us. So if this time is one of those times, hear me, we are ready to die for him. And the king said, what did you do? He said, listen, we don't need to negotiate this matter. We are not bowing to this your God, which is small. In fact, this your God is smaller than me, sir. Cannot compare to our own God. How can a whole me be bowing down to this your God? You yourself, judge. And the king got so angry and asked them to increase the fire. The fire was so hot that those who escorted them died. And they who were in the fire had a discussion. The, the angel was saying, so how did you feel when you were coming? He said, I was afraid though, but I knew, I knew that God would do something. That's the lifestyle of the kingdom. But you see, you can't get there except you are ready to be destroyed. You know, you're doing one leg here, one leg there. He said, plan B. So if this one fail, Father, I will, I will, I will. But the way you do your thing, we have and them come for. Come over there. You need to leave your all on the altar. Are you following me? This man was there in his own house. He had everything he needed, but he didn't take one pin. And he was blaming his father. That's what you always say, which is the way many of us are living. That's the way we are living. You're blaming God, you're complaining, and yet he's done his own part. He's done his own part for you. It's for you to now appropriate your part and get stand up in faith. Challenge the thing. We are here to occupy. We are not here at the expense of the devil. He said, we are the ones to enforce his kingdom. In that school where you are, when you hit the place tomorrow, walk in as somebody who is in charge. You don't go there and be hiding. Say, hey, I brought my Bible today, or let them not see. In the first service, I told them, even on the day you are fasting, you can't carry your Bible to work. Then what of ordinary days? You should have at least one Bible at work. So that if in case somebody comes, you need to pray to them, you open it. Or you need to cross-check something. Check. They say, what is this? My holy Bible. Are you interested in it? It's not to wrap it with old newspaper. Everyone took a camera at them. Shame on you. Thank God for the small devices we have now. So it doesn't look like a Bible. So you, are, you think you are relieved. No, your heart needs to be on God's side. And you now need to live the kingdom life. Not only in church. He says, I wish above all that you may prosper and be in health. So getting sick and getting healed is below the kingdom standard. It's time to begin to say, well, this year, that malaria will not be my portion. No, 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 thank you, I'm healed. Made every weed whole. Every day for the rest of my life, I'm going to become healthy. This is kingdom life. He said, but if I'm sick, that's when they ask me, hey, what will you eat? You want to do? Or oh, fried plantain. So you need to be sick again so that they can, they can ask you, will you eat that fang? But, mm, I don't feel like. They say, eat a little. So you eat a little after. They say, you don't like it. Okay, eat rice. So you say, mm, yeah, man. 
Because you want them to bring the do. They now bring the do. You eat more. Say, I feel like drinking tea. <laughs> you can have all that while you are well. You don't need that sigro behavior to get it. Are you following me? So you make up your mind. Sickness will no longer be part of my life. I rise above it. This is kingdom life. Every year I struggle to pay rent. Every year, no, no, I must rise above it. Rise above it. My testimony to my landlord must be something. So you begin to make a plan. How much is the rent? So how much do I need to make? And you look at it. Listen, Jesus in his time paid his bill. He even had a treasurer. And to make matters worse, his treasurer was not just 419, was an established thief. And the ministry did not get broke. And Jesus did not sack him. Even though he knew the man was stealing the money. What a person to appoint treasurer. But Jesus also had people. He had the, God, the kingdom had people. This Virgin Mary. That would need to give birth to Jesus. And the other Mary. Two extreme Marys. That Mary. You know the Mary. She had perfume that was. The, how much was the cost? One year's salary. For one bottle of perfume. You think that person is born again? Do you think so? But we have those people in the kingdom. Those of you who think that they are not born again, you are missing it. That they are perfume, one bottle. We need them in the kingdom. This other Mary will never bring that perfume. Can bring the Lord. But you need this other Mary too. Are you still with me? So when you look at people, you look at their coat that has bought you her. In fact, she said, that, see the man shoe, one shoe, half a million. Told you how I went to that, what was I preaching? They gave me one wrist much. I said, no, I can't wear this. And the fellow who gave me, they, they also gave him. He said, he can't wear that. He thought of, he said, it's me that he should give this watch. When I saw it, I said, no, I can't wear this watch and go to Lagos and they will go and cut my hand to take the watch. Cut my hand to take this watch. Those Lagos people, they're only next to worry. Do you know the last next I, I stopped by the watch shop and I said, let me check. I saw watches 26,000 euro. 20,000. One wrist watch. The other time we went to Le Meridian and they saw a car. So I went to ask, I said, how much is this? They said 15 million. I said, for how many? How many? <laughs> you buy one car, 15 million. But the other Mary had one bottle of perfume, one year salary. You think you would have, when she enters this church like this, you know that she has come. Is that Mary in church today? I can see your hand, but I cannot smell the perfume. <laughs> The kingdom of God has variety. Are you following me? One thing God has helped me to do is not to use my lifestyle to judge another person. We can only judge people by scripture. I like a low profile, quiet life. That doesn't make me more righteous than people who are loud. During the convention, we needed big cars. So I call my colleagues who have big cars in the city. We need that your car. Send us three SUVs. And they brought it. My car was not... It was for chapter chairman from Northeast. <laughs> Those from Borono. <laughs> yes, that's the people we carried. <laughs> Borono, Yobe, and all those places. And this was high class for them. But the other people, even the cars we borrowed, they look small. Thank God that the state government came and gave us cars and protocol officers. So they carried them. When did you see even when Pastor Deboye was going? His own pro protocol team almost surpassed his government own. And you would think they are not born again. 
So don't think that, well, now that we are born again, the kingdom of God, you see, we just have to keep managing and uh, we are managing. I've given you examples now. <laughs> so we have to manage. You see, yesterday, the Lord spoke to me. He said, um, we should save money. You see, so we should not drink milk when we take tea. I was not there when the Lord did not say that. You can live like that. Are you following me? Don't think that those people who, when you go to this parking space, you will know that it's our church people. Hmm. People also there. You will see cars. But I wonder, what do they give in the offering? The people who buy those cars. Are you following me? I really wonder where is their heart? What's, where is their heart? I wonder. When I announced, I said, don't go empty today with your car. Get somebody. I still see some cars go empty. And it looks like we are joking. We are not joking. The Bible says, I was sick and you visited me. It didn't say and you healed me. I was thirsty, you gave me water. When last did you give somebody water to drink? Somebody came to you and said, excuse me, can I have water to drink? He said, look at me very well. Do I look like your house boy? Said, okay, sorry. I thought you live here. He said, I don't only live here. I own this building. Excuse me, by the way, how did you enter here? <laughs> Get man! Where did this man pass through? Say both of you outside now. I don't want to see you again. Your job has finished. Because somebody asks you for one bottle of water, that's not kingdom life. That's not kingdom life. That's not kingdom life. Listen, you don't find here that they said you preach 10,000 messages. Say things happen. Whoa, great, that one. No, that's it. you don't find it here. He said, I was hungry. You gave me food. I was, this is, you need to begin to live, let the kingdom of God branch your house. Let it be that you can see, people can recognize that you represent Jesus. You look like him. Don't only have him to meet your needs. When you wake up today and say, Father, today I want to eat fried rice. Give me fried rice, give me fried rice. If you don't give me fried rice, I will backslide. You will backslide. You will backslide. He won't send it. Then you will go. The devil will give you fried rice. You will eat it. It will be coming out of your nose. We, have, we see it in scripture. You will eat it and the, the rice will be coming out of your nose. It's time to take a stand for the kingdom of God. We need to make a mark in this city. And I want to be part of it. He says, if you have two coats, give one to your brother. He doesn't say if you have five. And some of us have ten. And when you come like this, so what did I wear last Sunday? Nobody knows what you wore last Sunday. Ask your neighbor. He, won't, he doesn't know. It's only in your mind. So I didn't come to church because I had no new dress. Must you wear a new dress every Sunday? The last one you wore, you haven't paid for. <laughs> I will not come and bail you from police. From borrowing money to buy dress to come to church. We don't need the dress. Come as you are. Are you following me? So when you come like this, they say, my God, this guy is together. Where does he work? Even if you are working, don't use all your money to feed your dog. When your siblings' school fees have not been paid. Your parents who send you to school, in, they are in the village. Their roof is leaking. And you are buying a new car. Your head is not correct. And when they die, you will build a house in three weeks. And buy four cows. 
and repent the whole place. You are not part of the kingdom. Let this gospel affect your life. Are you hearing me? And let it be obvious that you have become a part of the kingdom. You say, but I've always lived like this. Nothing has happened. God is still blessing me. He said, don't count his bearing with you as foolishness. He's only giving you time so that you can repent. You have been at the gate since. So turn around so they can open the gates for you to enter. And let, now you are born again. Let your life show that you have really, really become part of of the kingdom. Let's rise on our feet today. Lord, I don't just want to hear the gospel. I don't just want to preach it. I want to live it. Help me. Talk to God. I pray for your people. Grace from heaven will rest upon them. Lord, we pray that all these words will never be for judgment. But you will meet our needs. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We'll come back on Wednesday with great testimonies of what you will do. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus name.